What's up, guys? Ryo here again. Um, sporting some new, some new headgear today. Got some new stuff on my face piece. No, not really. These, my friends, believe it or not, are 3D glasses. Pretty crazy, huh? Here we go. Back to normal. <laughs> As you can probably tell, I just got back in from My Bloody Valentine 3D. Um, hence the glasses and the popcorn. <laughs> and I thought I would do a review on it right off the hop, let people know what I thought of it. Especially because I've been sort of talking about it a lot lately. And um, yeah. Here are my thoughts. Um, this was cool. Um, you can see it was real D, which I mentioned the other day. Um, oh man, how do I put it? The movie is a gimmick because the movie it's it, it sucks. It pretty much sucks. Yeah, it's pretty much the best way to put it. Um, the 3D is very cool. Um, I didn't know what to expect from it. And when they handed me these, I was kind of like, well, this is a little weird. Um, <coughs> if I could show you guys the 3D glasses that I have um, on my own. Mm. Just one sec. Ooh. Oh. They did make an appearance in this movie. Nope. There might have been some beer in it, but not a whole lot, and not Moosehead. Um, the ones that I have for my 3D viewer, essentially they're like um, a dark lens and a light lens, and they flicker. And I think what this one plays on is one's slightly darker than the other, but I, I don't think you can tell that here. And I'm not sure of that, but anyway. Yeah, the 3D is cool, and when you see it for the first time, you're like, oh, that's very neat. Um, kind of wears off after a little while. Um... They keep bringing up gags, and the ending's full of gags. I'm not going to lie to you. This is just, like, stuff you would expect from a 3D movie, I guess. But the, that's the point. The movie is the movie was not made to be a film on its own and then 3D. It's made to be a 3D movie. Um, so it's kind of cool seeing stuff. They play a lot of gags over and over again, though. Like, they keep doing stuff where they're, like, viewing whoever's on screen through like a fence like that comes up way too often and it, the idea gives you some depth like you're seeing them through something right <clears throat> um another thing that annoyed me with it was the coronas on lights like if there was a light in the background like if this was on like that like that corona that comes off of it is in 3D as well I find like it was really sort of screwing up my vision sometimes so sometimes when they're in the mine and that's happening it's like I don't know, it's sort of distracting, but it's still very cool. Um, I wouldn't watch a whole lot of movies like this. Um, the few that are made like this, maybe for a fun like ride kind of thing, would be cool, but not something that I would make a point to go to a lot. Um, this is the bag it came in. It's funny, it says, like, not safe for use of sunglasses on the back. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, um, as far as the movie... Um, it follows the original pretty uh, for a bit. Um, similar characters. Axel's there. TJ's there, but he's called Tom. Um, I, I think I mentioned the deviations of the storyline before, but one that I didn't know, Axel, um, who's played by Kurt Smith in the movie, um, he is a sheriff in this one. Um, <clears throat> not another minor like TJ was kind of thing. And like I said, there's a lot of different variations in the story. And at first, I thought the story was playing out well. Because it was doing a good job of sort of like who it was a who done it like mostly, and one thing I can say is there is a lot of very good gore scenes in this movie, lots of them, some very like, um, or some pretty horrific stuff. The opening scene you're just kind of sitting there like they really get you in the opening. I'm not gonna lie, um, <clears throat> and that's something that is good about the movie, the gore effects. Um, some of them were definitely CG because they had to be I think for the 3D stuff, but there is a fair amount of practical stuff in there as well. And the three the the computer stuff they did pretty well I think like they meshed it like it's a mix between a practical effect and then maybe 
um, a computer generated effect like to amplify it and stuff like that but <clears throat> that's definitely something that's good but I think one of the things I said about the original was that you sort of think that the killer's going to always use the pickaxe as their weapon as his weapon Harry Ward <clears throat> and he doesn't he uses all kinds of different stuff like I said it spices it up a little in this one pretty much always the pickaxe <laughs> but um, there's some throwbacks to other uh, to the original there's all kinds of scenes that are sort of throwbacks um, <clears throat> and uh, there's also some funny moments there's a at the very start, there's a bunch of kids in there, sort of in a mine, and um, one of them's like, Michael, is that you, Michael? And he's like, I'm not going to say what happens. And then another kid comes in, and he's like, Jason? Jason, is that you? So they threw a little nod in there, I guess. But there's little, like, hiccups, too. Um, there's one point, there's one scene where the whole scene is actually inverted. Like, it's in the grocery store. I won't say one or anything like that, but watch for it. You'll notice the background. All the words are backwards. <clears throat> so they inverted it to maybe make it fit the f scene better or something like that. Uh, and there's one other major hiccup. There's definitely some stuff cut out of this movie. Um, it definitely is because there's a scene where... Uh, I'll say it. Okay, if you don't want... This isn't a spoiler, really, but if you don't want to hear it, then stop the video right now or skip ahead 20 seconds or something like that but anyway there's a scene where Tom Atkins is in this movie um, and I'll go into that in a little more but there's a scene where Harry is in this house um, and he's going after this kid well he's not really going after the kid but he's in the house anyway and there's a cop watching the house and Tom Atkins all of a sudden shows up and he's like he's in the house and him and the cop they don't think anything of it they go in after him but there is no point before that where he would have had any idea that they were in the house. In fact, he's not even in any of the scenes before that for, like, a while. So there must be something in there, like, that they cut out and thought that no one would notice. And it's just brutal. Like, just brutal. But Tom Atkins is really cool in it. He's really awesome. Um, he's only in a few scenes, but he's a bad motherfucker in them, so I like that. Um, <clears throat> but, like I said, this movie is just not good. Uh, and like I said, at first I thought the script was kind of cool, um, sort of a whodunit, but... I got pretty tired of it pretty quickly. By the end of it, I was kind of like, meh. Um, the ending, I didn't like. Um, the acting is so-so, I guess. There's nothing really all that special about it. Um, and it's just, they somehow, it's the same as all these remakes. And it may just be for people like myself and like maybe a lot of people my age that grew up on other horror movies that it just doesn't have the same feel. There's something that's taken out of it. It's almost too real. And, um, yeah, it didn't do it for me. However, like... There was a kid next to me. There was a lot of kids in this movie. I don't know how they got in because it was rated 18A, but uh, that's rated R in Canada. Um, the kid, like one kid, like stood up and was like, "That was the best horror movie I've ever seen. That was so awesome." But like some kid, there was another kid to my left who just didn't get anything that was going on. Like, I swear to God, ten minutes left in the movie. There is ten minutes left, and I swear to God, this kid and I quote you, "Who is Harry Warden?" I swear to God, he said that, and then. There's this scene where a bunch of miners like are in like the mine, and I swear he looked at them and he goes, "Are they the bad guys?" <laughs> Shocking stuff, man. Shocking stuff. Anyway, I guess I've made my point. Um, if you want to see this movie for the 3D effects and you want to see something cool, check it out because the 3D is very cool. And some of the trailers are in 3D for some other movies that are coming out in 3D, and uh, it's it's something to see. I really have to say that. If you're going to this movie for the story, don't waste your time. Rent it maybe down the line. But I wouldn't say go see it in the theater without the 3D because you're just going to get, like, you're not going to enjoy the gimmick and all you're going to get out of it is the crappy, like, story and movie that is there. So, um, yeah, you'll have to make your own decisions. As a Endurance Productions always says, you know, make your own judgments. Go out and check it out if you want to. Um, but I'll tell you right now, the story sucks. Um movie pretty much sucks, but 3D was very cool, very cool, I was impressed by that, but anyway, um, that's all I have to say, I guess, on it, and um, take it easy, guys, and I'll talk to you later.